free. Gets the ball, puts up a three pointer. I ain't even got an intro for today. We jumping straight into the straight peak. We start off this chapter with Urame asking Sukuna, who is Yuji Itadori? He says that Yuji is Kenjaku's creation, but he doesn't know the body. Urame states that they were laughing at his face, but at that time felt some similarity between Sukuna and Yuji. That time being when Yuji went crazy versus him after he took over Megami, and when they compared him to that statue after they dipped. And that shit was actually crazy to me, bro. Sukuna, a true hater, because how you gonna recall shit from about a millennium ago just to make fun of a nigga? Urame goes on to say that Yuji's power was able to distance itself from the shell. It couldn't be explained just by the residue left by Sukuna. And I know I probably could have phrased that better because I understand what they're saying, but I can't really put it into words. So we're going to put this into NBA terms. Basically, Yuji is Steph Curry. And even though Sukuna, aka KD, left, he was still able to prove himself as an amazing player and still win another championship, even though everyone should have known this already. Does that make sense? No? Too bad. Sukuna goes on to say that it's just a Kenjaku thing, since he wouldn't really create a child without reasoning, and honestly it seems to me that he just don't care. He also believes that he and Yuji shared the same soul. He says that when he was in the womb, he was about to starve to death, so he ate his twin brother, rejecting his fate as a twin and allowing him to survive. And when the physical body died, the soul of his brother wandered around until Kenjaku found it. And if y'all remember with Maki and Mai, twins are basically one entity in the world of Jujutsu, usually meaning as long as both of them are alive, they're gonna be trash forever. So rejecting his fate as a twin probably made him even stronger than he was supposed to be. And two really quick things before we go on. One, Meg Kuna is easily Sukuna's best design, no questions asked. The best thing that Megami ever did was Airbnb his body for Sukuna's use. Immediately got rid of that sea urchin haircut of his and had him dripped out. I know his reputation is kind of tarnished because he got washed by Gojo in it, but like it's still top one for me. And two, the fact that Kenjaku went that far to find the soul of Sukuna's dead brother, bang the nigga that had it, and then created Yuji in the death pinning wombs just to not see his master plan to the end is crazy to me. I can't even lie. This dude is crazy. Sukuna goes on to say that Yuji was always going to be a culling game player because he had the Sukuna finger in him. Pause, hold on, no diddy. Which he speculates was to increase his strength as a host. And Urama is like, oh yeah, I get it. But wonders, if they're related, doesn't that mean that Yuji has the same potential as Sukuna does? Hmm, noticing. Then we cut to the next panel, and we see Yuji and Sukuna posted up, ready to run the ones. Shit damn near brought a tear to my eye. I've been waiting on my boy so long to do this, man. Almost feels like a dream. And the best part about Sukuna is that you can always tell how he's feeling from his facial expressions. And right now, this nigga is mad. Anyone, and I mean anyone, could be going up against him right now, and he'd be ecstatic. Nigga was turning into MLK, talking about how he had a dream to fight sorcerers as strong as them and shit. But since he's fighting Yuji, he gotta act calm. And oh my god, I forgot to mention the fact that he isn't even his brother, or the fact that they're related in general. You see, thanks to a mistranslation, everyone thought that they would be brothers since he was supposed to be the reincarnated version of Sukuna. But turns out, Yuji's dad, Jin, was his brother, and Yuji's just his nephew, which makes these interactions so much funnier, because I can understand hating on a little brother. I do it all the time, but you his uncle and hating like this? That's just crazy, but not gonna lie. After the ass whooping that Yuji was giving him, I would have been a hater too, because damn. But anyway, peep game real quick. Sukuna comes in first with the slash, but Yuji parries that and immediately comes in with a black flash. Had this man shook. And me too. We barely a page into this fight and he already cooking. Sukuna tries to parry Yuji the same way he did earlier. But he slaps that nigga away and comes in with number two. Hit that swift as hell. Stared him down after that shit too. He locked in. And Sukuna doesn't know whether to be impressed or to start tweaking out. He throws Yuji away. But he immediately gets back up and we see this. Also notice that Yuji blacked this man's lower left arm so hard that he gave him revitiligo like he Uncle Ruckus. On the next page, we see Sukuna remarking that Yuji can do it. And then the narrator starts talking. He says that Yuji currently has two techniques. Blood manipulation, which he obtained by eating brothers 4 through 9 of the death painting wombs. And by awakening through the black flash, he obtained Sukuna's shrine technique as well. Meaning two things. One, once again my boy beat the no CT and punch kick merchant allegations again. And two, that the soul swap slash punch thingy might not be a technique, although we're gonna have to wait for confirmation on that. Anyway, back to the fight. Yuji throws that pillar that he cut off at Sukuna, but Sukuna cuts it up and comes in with those size 15 grippers of his. Big ass feet bro, what the fuck? And tries to stomp on Yuji. Then we see that Yuji is using his, or Sukuna's technique, on his feet, trying to cut him off. 
and I can't even lie. I know this is supposed to be cool and stuff, but they really gave him the Disney Junior version of Cleve for this man. Got the scissors on his intended targets looking cute as shit. It's still fire though, but I'm just saying. Then Zuko gonna try to come in with a few dismantles. That shit weak as hell. He eats that light work, no reaction, and comes in with number three, straight to the gut. And even Suguna is starting to get concerned, wondering how the hell is Yuji able to do this? Even though there's differences thanks to the error and the mentality of the sorcerer, and the fact that his output is still low because he just learned it, he's still going crazy. Now we come back to a flashback, and we see Ino talking to Gojo, Shoko, and Gojo's Uber. He's asking if it's okay that he uses Nanami's cursed weapon, cause he think it wouldn't be right to just take it without asking his oldest friends. But Gojo and company says that Nanami trusted him the most, so it's cool. Gojo also looks like this one Yuki panel. I can't find it, but y'all know what I mean. Then Eno pulls out number four, which is a dragon, and he attacks Sukuna with it. Now, was this dope as hell? Yes, sir. Did it do shit? Absolutely not. Same slashes that Yuji was eating turned this shit into a Lego set. Nobody had ever lived to tell the tale. My ass, nigga. But I will cut him some slack, because it's Sukuna. He tries going in for a hit with the cursed weapon, but gets stomped on by Sukuna. And as he's over here mad as hell, we see the goat himself posted up behind him ready to strike. He already know what's up. Yuji comes in for number 4. Got this man Sukuna infuriated. Bro was in genuine disbelief that he was hitting this on him. Putting up black flash combos on him like it's another day at the office. And speaking of combos, check out this cool shit I did in the strongest battlegrounds the other day. Nope. We and as Sukuna gets sent into another building, we see Eno over here lying on his back. Sad that he wasn't able to do much. But don't feel bad for him just yet, cause we not done. Sukuna makes the floor collapse, which got Yuji in the air floating like he's in an edit. Then Sukuna pulls up on him with a slash and punch attack combo, but once again, that don't, don't work. work. Cause usually throws this grown ass man off him. Got him looking crazy. And Sukuna attempts to slash him away. But he didn't realize that Yuji took his spot back as the MC. He eats that shit and comes in with this form. I don't even need to say it anymore. Cause y'all know what's next. Comes in with number 5. Rearranging Sukuna's guts. No pause. Full ditty. And low key. I thought this looked familiar. And then I realized. Because Sukuna did Choso the exact same way. Not even a chapter ago. Most definitely did this on purpose too. Had to get back for his big bro. And we see Sukuna's hand in Yuji's face. Gets him real good. Got him looking like Sukuna himself for a moment. But he eats that and all Sukuna's old ass can do is watch as he gets blacked for the sixth time in a row. Now this man is pissed off. And at this point, I can't even blame him. Nigga out here using my techniques, my moves, in my body, and on me? And I would've been tweaking too. And Yuji ain't even done. Cause we see Nanami's blade come in. But instead of Eno, we just see it bounce off. And Yuji's posted up ready to strike. And I'd like to note that Yuji beat this nigga so badly that they ended up in the sewers. He gonna run into Master Splinter in him if he keeps beating him like this. Then we see Eno over here happy with what he's been able to accomplish as a sorcerer of his standing. And yes, we gotta give him props. Cause unlike the others, he ain't a prodigy or the reincarnation of an ancient sorcerer or nothing. He just a regular ass dude doing his job. And he out here hanging with the big boy, so uh, props to him. He tells Yuji to let that nigga know. And Yuji responds by blowing Sukuna's back out for the seventh time. Seven, eight, eight times he's hit Sukuna with a black flash. Sukuna got black eight times in a row. Not even Riley Reed was putting them numbers up in her prime, man. This nigga Yuji, generational. Narrator talking about how he's superior to the king himself. Go shit. As far as chapters go, this was an easy 11 out of 10. One of the best chapters of JJK. Not only did we get some lore into Yuji's origins, finding out who he truly was, but we got to see one of the best performances in JJK history. Eight black flashes in a row, counting that last one, is crazy. Seeing Yuji perform like this, after all them bum ass hoes like Ricardo were talking crazy about him, brings tears of joy to my eyes. And like I said, stay on that side, cause we winners over here. Can't wait to see what's in store for next week. Maybe I'll stream, who knows? But yeah. That's it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Before we end it off, this video was sponsored by Anime Express. Anime Express has a variety of merchandise from all your favorite animes, such as Jujutsu Kaisen, Naruto, Demon Slayer, One Piece, and others. They got a variety of stuff and cool things, such as hoodies, t-shirts, necklaces, and this dope-ass sword over here. Personally, my favorite is the Chosa hoodie, because as much as I be hating on bro, 
This shirt is tough as hell. And if you want 10% off, use my code NOAH10 at checkout. Link in the description. And yeah, thanks for watching.